Good evening. My name is Sherry Mitchell. I'm a member of the Penobscot Nation. I'm an Indigenous Rights Attorney and the Executive Director of an organization called the Land Peace Foundation, which works on national and international Indigenous rights issues. I want to talk to you today about something that often gets overlooked in discussions surrounding the TPP, which is how it impacts Indigenous rights. In the same vein as deals like NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, and the World Trade Organization, the TTP is being drafted with no input from indigenous peoples who live in countries that will be affected by the deal. The TPP could have broad implications for indigenous peoples living in the United States, Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, and Vietnam. <clears throat> the TPP entirely disregards the concept of free prior and informed consent, which is a tenant of the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which states that policies affecting Indigenous peoples should not move forward without the full understanding and approval of those it might affect. The agreement threatens to dramatically affect Indigenous peoples in many ways, including by ramping up trade policies that have allowed for transnational corporations to engage in oil, gas, and mineral extraction without the free prior and informed consent of their communities. TPP policies would encourage the natural gas industry, which has already severely affected Native and First Nations communities in North America. The TPP would facilitate increased exports of liquefied natural gas by requiring the U.S. Department of Energy to automatically approve all gas exports to TPP countries. Increased exports would mean an increase in hydraulic fracturing in this country, or fracking, the dirty and violent process that dislodges gas deposits from shale rock formations. Natural gas companies have already begun encroaching otherwise off-limits native lands. We've seen this recently in a defense bill where Apache land was giving away to a foreign mining company. Uniquely affecting native women, these fracking operations tend to be correlated with increased sex trafficking because they uh, have man camps that develop around them, rape, missing and murdered indigenous women, influxes of drugs and alcohol into communities in addition to its obvious environmental effects contaminating local water and air quality. The TPP would also allow companies to evade financial responsibility for environmental contamination, even when it occurs on indigenous people's lands. Under the TPP, investors would have the ability to demand taxpayer comp compensation for imposed fines, effectively burdening the public with the cost of environmental cleanup. The TPP draft chapter on environmental regulations fails to define its key term, in its key terms, leaving vagueness that will allow for inconsistent interpretation and implementation of regulations. Nowhere in the chapter does it detail a mechanism for setting penalties for environmental offenders, and that's on both indigenous and non-indigenous lands. It excludes resource management practices and ignores standards set by the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. The draft article on trade and biodiversity recognizes the rights of states over natural resources and genetic material. This would allow multinational corporations like Monsanto and industries like Big Pharma to benefit enormously by allowing them exclusive rights over things like seeds and traditional plant-based medicines found in biodiverse areas managed by indigenous communities. The agreement flagrantly ignores the United Nations specific mention of this in the declaration which states, indigenous peoples have the right to maintain control, protect, Con maintain, control, protect, and develop the manifestations of their sciences, technologies, and cultures, including human and genetic resources, seeds, medicines, knowledge of the properties of fauna and flora, and that's found in Article 31 of the UN Declaration. The patenting of plants that have been used traditionally by indigenous peoples without their consent or benefit sharing has been called biopiracy and would snowball given the approval of the TPP. Indigenous activists um, from across the world, including a Maori activist, um, says for us to imagine a world where indigenous knowledge, language, and customs are outright owned by multinational corporations and copyright enforcement is heavily backed by government police forces. 
The TPP won't only affect indigenous freehold land, nor will it just push our people further into poverty. The TPP will give multinationals the right to exploit the ecosystem and further aid them in acquiring of enforced trademarking copywriting of indigenous intellectual property and cultural or traditional knowledge. In other words, a new form of colonization. One of the most troubling aspects of the TPP is found in the draft chapter on investment deals with investor state dispute settlement, which gives corporations the right to sue a government for unlimited cash compensation in private and non-transparent tribunals, which we've heard a number of the other speakers talk about, over nearly any law or policy that a corporation alleges will reduce its profits. The vast majority of investment arbitrations under similar agreements involve natural resources, especially mining, and have resulted in billions of dollars of damages against governments, these are under previous trade agreements, for measures designed to protect the environment from harm by foreign corporations. Under the proposed TPP, the investor state clause can be used to pressure governments into allowing the continued operation of the severely polluting industries out of fear of being sued for lost profits. Governments around the world are already extremely reluctant to regulate industries like mining and oil, which can bring them large revenues in royalties with the potential that states could be held financially responsible for reining in harmful business practices, corporate profits, um, corporate profit gains, and even stronger precedence over disenfranchised indigenous peoples living with destructive industries in their backyards. And as an indigenous rights attorney who does this work across the Americas, one of the trends that we have seen in advance of the TPP being passed, or hopefully not being passed, but uh, being uh, lobbied for, is that countries have begun to wage an attack against indigenous rights. In this country and in Canada, we have seen the biggest attack on indigenous rights that we've seen in over 100 years. And this is presumed to be a preemptive strike against indigenous rights in anticipation of the TPP coming through because nations and states can actually be sued for having rights that protect the lands of indigenous peoples. If the corporation's uh, industry wants to get in there and wants to exploit those lands and those resources, they can actually sue the nations and the states that have laws protecting indigenous people. And this is extremely problematic because it takes us back to a time uh, in history that I don't think any of us want to repeat. This is, a, uh, like they said, this is a new form of colonialism and this is corporate genocide. And it's happening all over the planet already and it's going to be here in your backyard if we don't stop this thing. Thank you very much.